This tutorial is based on the blow molding of a bottle, and I'll be focusing on the setup of contact-based mesh adaption. Now I've already loaded the data file, which includes all of the problem setup except for the adaptive meshing. Here's a quick overview of the problem. This is the initial parison shown on the right, and the mold is on the left. You'll notice that I've used a plane of symmetry to reduce computation time, which is why there's only one half of the problem visible. So as soon as the simulation begins, the two halves of the mold move together, pinching the parison. Once the two halves meet, a positive pressure of 100 kilopascals, or one bar, is introduced inside the closed mold. This blows the parison into the shape of the mold, which is a bottle in this case. Once you've defined all the tasks and subtasks for your problem, you're ready to set up mesh adaption. You'll want to begin at the uppermost polydata menu. For this case, I only have one main task called FEM Task 1. In the FEM Task 1 menu, I'll select Numerical Parameters and then Adaptive Meshing. In this problem, I have a moving mold that contacts the parison, and then the parison expands and comes into contact with the rest of the mold. This means that I want to click Activate Adaptive Meshing for Contacts, since this is the area where I'm most concerned about the mesh accurately conforming to the shape of the bottle. Polydata opens to the Global Criteria for Contact menu. First I need to enable the criteria. Note that I have the option to switch to local criteria mode, but seeing as the present case involves contact with only one mold, I can apply these parameters globally. I'm having Polyflow calculate when to remesh based on angle and curvature, and there are four parameters that I need to specify for this technique. The minimum and maximum element sizes, the tolerance, and a critical distance. The parison is 280 millimeters tall, so I don't want any elements to be smaller than 2 millimeters, and I'll enter that for size min. I also don't want any elements to be bigger than 6 millimeters, so I'll enter that for size max. For tolerance, I'll enter 0.2 millimeters. Since the parison and mold discretization don't coincide, the tolerance is the maximum distance that you would like there to be between any node of the mold and the nearest parison element. Essentially, the tolerance is like asking, how close do I need the parison to get to the corner of the mold? It's good practice to select a tolerance that is between 0.1 and 0.2% of the total size of your mold. Alternatively, you could set the tolerance to the same value as the penetration accuracy defined for the contact. Finally, I need to specify the critical distance between the parison and the mold, at which point the mesh is checked to see if it needs to be subdivided. Selecting a larger size for the critical distance results in larger portions of the parison mesh being filled with subdivided elements and therefore a higher element count, whereas specifying too small of a critical distance can delay the activation of adaptive meshing and potentially hinder the elements from being reduced to an appropriate size. For this problem, I'll go with 7 millimeters. Now that I've defined the global parameters, I'll go up to the Adaptive Meshing menu. Here I'll enable Mesh Conformalization, which ensures that the mesh only contains conformal elements. There are two parameters that I need to specify for adaptive meshing. Max div is the maximum number of subdivisions that an element can undergo. I'll leave it at 3. I also need to specify the number of time steps that will be calculated between remeshings. Although the default here is 1, an end step of 4 or 5 is recommended for contact remeshing problems. I'll go with 5. Now I've specified everything that I need to for adaptive meshing for this problem, so I'll skip to post-processing so I can show you how using adaptive meshing can improve your results by comparing my non-adapted results on the left and the adapted results on the right-hand side. Both systems take the shape of the bottle, but as you can see on the left, the non-adapted mesh solution is less well-defined near the edges as compared to the adapted mesh results on the right, where the solution conforms much closer to the actual shape of the bottle mold. The main benefit of the adapted mesh solution is that it more accurately predicts the parison thickness distribution than the non-adapted version does. Now that you've seen how the results compare, I'll give you a quick look at how the two different meshes compare with non-adapted on the left and the adapted mesh on the right. You can see how much more refined the mesh is along the edges of the adapted results, which is why the results I showed a moment ago are so much better in the adapted version. This concludes this video on contact-based mesh adaption. Thanks for watching.